And our next uh, speaker is uh, Noga H. Rotman from the Hebrew University, and she will present a recent ICML 2019 paper, A Deep Reinforcement Learning Perspective on Internet Congestion Control. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you for that introduction. Um, so, hey, everyone, and thank you for staying so late. And I'm sorry this is showing rather weird on screen. Hopefully, we won't have any problems. So, again, I'm Noga, and I'm showing a deep reinforcement learning perspective on internet congestion control. This is joint work with my co-author, Nathan, as well as our um, collaborators, Brighton, Michael, and Aviv. I'm going to start us off with a scenario that I'm sure most of us already know or experienced anyway. So imagine you're sitting at home and you're streaming your favorite movie or TV show and you're right on the edge of your seat. There's like a real intense scene going on and then this. So video stops working. Um, this phenomenon and uh, several other ones, very annoying as well, are the results of one of the most fundamental and challenging problems in uh, computer networks, which is internet congestion control. It basically uh, determines what you get out of the internet, and specifically, it sets the rate in which data goes into the network. And just in case you didn't know, it runs all the time on every connection you run, and it does that without any prior knowledge. So to understand a little bit about this problem, I'm going to use the analogy of a water pipe. So let's, Im let's imagine we have this pipe, and on one side we have faucets for providers, say one for Facebook and another one for Netflix. On the other side, we're going to have buckets that correspond with those. So on the other side, and then we what we want to do is the providers want to send us the water, the data. So hopefully they're going to just um, turn on the faucet and the water is going to stream right in. Um, okay, that's good. Somebody on the side of the bucket is then going to yell, hey, listen, I got like half a bucket. The other person is going to have to react to that. So. This is basically what's happening with the internet. Now the question then becomes, how fast are we going to stream the data or the water? Because if on one hand, if we stream too slow, then we're gonna harm performance, right? Um, for example, you might not be able to view your movie in HD. Uh, on the other hand, if we go too fast, we might overflow uh, the pipe because we don't really know anything, right? We don't know who, who um, the other suppliers are, if there are any, we don't know the capacity of the pipe, and so on. So we have very limited information to go on. Uh, hopefully now you understand a little bit more about why this is so challenging. So let's take a step back to internet congestion control. So this is a very simple scenario. When we have one sender, he wants to send uh, information or packets to receiver one. So he sends it over the um, um, uh, two routers we have here. And when the receiver is going to get the um, data securely, what he, uh, she's going to do is basically send back an acknowledgement or X. And this is the only information the sender is going to have when he's going to decide on the sending rate. So this is very limited, right? It doesn't have very, it doesn't have anything basically to go on. Um, obviously, this is a very simplistic view of the internet. We can have more senders on one end and then one, uh, more receivers. And in some applications, such as YouTube, you get this amazing, massive agent churn where agent keeps coming and going at incredible rates. Additionally, obviously, just two routers is not representative of the internet, and we can have very complex, very um, dynamic networks going on. So, as you can see, very complicated problem, very dynamic, and we don't really know what to do with it because we have so very limited information. So, what can we do? So, for the past, for almost 30 years, the internet's um, default uh, algorithm to deal with this problem was called Transmission Control Protocol, uh, or as you might know it, TCP. The problem with the TCP is it doesn't really work. So this is the results of an experiment where people uh, tried to send a couple of gigs of data, um, and they tried to do it over the internet, and then they took a flash drive and tried to uh, take it on a plane and actually get physically to the target. Um, so we can see, for example, if we look um, 
And China, for example, Utah to China, we can see that it took like 22 hours uh, to get from, on a plane, but then like six days to actually get the data over the internet. So obviously not optimal results, not even getting close to what we want to get. Um, so we thought we can use uh, reinforcement learning, deep reinforcement learning, in order to solve this problem. And the reason for that is because we can think of a congestion control protocol as a sort of a black box, where going in is just a history of feedback that we perceive locally. So loss rates, latency, all these kind of things that we can gather from these acknowledgments that we get back. On the other end of this black box, we're going to get the next ending rate. So, our hypothesis was here that we can actually use the feedback to recognize patterns that um, perhaps TCP or heuristics or humans are unable to write down, but then, hold on, we do know a tool that knows how to um, recognize patterns, right? Deep reinforcement learning can do that, hopefully, right? I mean, it's been successful in other domains such as speech and games and all other. Um, a lot of other domains as well. So um, just to give you a bit of an intuition as to what patterns we expected this um, our agent to be able to kind of um, pick up on. So this is a simulation of a link that has 1% uh, random loss. Now this is something you would get from a physical link, you know, um, just the physical elements are going to cause some sort of random loss. In blue, you can see TCP. Uh, what happened here is that TCP, every time it gets um, a loss, it thinks that he, it has um, congested the link, so he can't send any faster. So he backs off, the sending rate backs off, and then the throughput gets really, really low. On the other hand, an RL agent trained on random loss already knows to differentiate between those two patterns. So when it gets this 1% random loss, it knows, okay, wait a minute, I know that if I increase my sending rate, I'm going to get much better reward later on, which is what you're seeing in orange. So this was our intuition. Uh, we can now get to what RL is. So for those of you who don't know, the goal of reinforcement learning is to maximize um, reward. In this scenario, we have an agent that interacts with an environment, and the agent observes state. It's going to output an action that's going to take place in the environment. As a result, the environment is going to output a reward corresponding with the action. And then at the next uh, timestamp, uh, the agent is going to observe a new state of the environment. So in our formulation, we used a neural network as our agent and uh, an in-house simulator for the environment. We, again, used these um, localized feedback that we're getting, a list of statistics, and outputting a number that we are going to use to set the new rate. And then we're going to use a reward function, which is something that is known in the congestion control world and used um, to determine what the reward is. So um, we use this platform, which uh, this is the first time, obviously, that uh, congestion control, uh, internet congestion control was formulated as reinforcement learning to create Aurora, which is an actual solution. So uh, going in the state, uh, we are going to um, take our time, uh, divide it into intervals, which we call monitor intervals. We're going to collect data at each one. We're going to use several of these, a uh, history, to feed into our neural network. I am going to stay here. I'm not going to get into the statistics, but we did use scale-free um, statistics, so we were able to get a very robust agent. Um, we used a uh, three-layered, uh, fully connected uh, neural network. We outputted a number, which is going to be the change factor. Again, this is to get a very robust agent. So um, I'm running out of time. So um, just a few words about training. We used a very simplified uh, network for the, for the training. And each episode just chooses different link parameters. We have four of these. Um, the entire training platform is available on our GitHub repo if you want to either uh, train your own or if you want to test your own uh, reinforcement learning uh, algorithm. Our goal here, because we came from such a real world issue and problem, we wanted our testing to be as close to the real world as possible. So first of all, we used emulation uh, and real packets going into the Linux kernel. In addition, what we did was use inference only. So obviously stop, stopping to train is going to cause us uh, to get um, 
perhaps worse performance than we would have if we continued to train. But it was important for us to get something that could actually be implemented in real life. So we used inference only, which should be faster and allow for faster adaptation. And still, we were able to get state-of-the-art results. So with a few seconds left, I'm just going to run through these really quickly. Um, we first checked that we, um, we are, that our agent is robust, so we tested um, our solution on um, parameters much wider than our training set, and we still got state-of-the-art result comparing uh, with TCP cubic and PCC Vivace, which is a state-of-the-art um, algorithm. And additionally, we ran uh, a tool called Pantheon. It is, some, is, is a tool that is known in the networking community. What you do is you just give it your algorithm and it runs it against state-of-the-art uh, algorithm and outputs the results. So what we want here is, um, we, this is a very dynamic link, so um, we want to be on the top left, which is high throughput, low latency. And as you can see, Aurora is right up there on the Pareto front of state-of-the-art algorithms. So um, we have a lot of exciting new directions to go with, and uh, I'll leave you with that. You can go to our GitHub repo for the data, and thank you for listening. Thank you, Noga. Uh, any quick question from the audience? Okay, so maybe I'll ask just a quick question. Uh, can you say something about the worst case performance of this algorithm? What happens if you have an adversarial protocol maybe? Or if I have a what? I'm maybe sorry. an adversary tries to do something or I don't know. Have, oh is gosh, it possible this is to one provide? of the directions we're looking at. Okay. There is actually uh, a paper at Hotnet uh, 2019 who tried to get adversarial on us and uh, you can check that out for the results. Great. Let's thank, thank Noga again. Thank you. And uh, I would like to invite now uh, Firas Shama from the Technion.